Hey guys, this is Shannon with Black Sheep House. In today's video, we're taking this old table that has tons of damage and giving it a modern makeover, but it's still going to have that warmth and that just inviting feel when you sit at it and just wanted it to feel very warm but modern at the same time. I also wanted to make this video very beginner friendly. If you're like me and have been intimidated by chemical strippers or maybe you've seen on Instagram people using like oven cleaner and all sorts of crazy stuff to strip wood, I wanted to show you from my point of view as sort of a novice when it comes to using chemical strippers what I did and what it looks like and spoiler alert it turns out really great <laughs> and it's not so intimidating as it might seem. I also installed totally different legs on this table in this video because I wanted cooler more modern legs and you saw the damage that was on one of the legs it looked like it had been out in the rain for a while or something but these legs I bought at Goodwill I bought the entire table it was $30 I think. This table is actually a pub height table bar stools are a little bit short for it it looks like but we're gonna find that out um, later on I'll just I'll cut the legs later and I'll go over all that but basically I'm going to remove the legs that are on the table and put these new legs on and I want it to be a good height for these bar stools that I have again I'm going for counter height and that's about like 36 and a half inches a table height for a counter height would be. This is the stripper that I went with. It's clean strip found at Lowe's. Obviously it's a chemical stripper. You'll need a mask. You'll need goggles. You'll need gloves. You absolutely must have these items. And if you're starting to refinish furniture, you might have collected a few of these items already and or it's time to get some because <laughs> even if you're just sanding and stuff like that sometimes you need these items i bought two containers of it but i ended up just using one so like i said i have always been intimidated by chemical strippers and that's why i have generally sanded every project <laughs> up until this point but i wanted to give this a go give it a formal shot and i have been pleasantly surprised by how easy it was to work with I, I know it looks like I'm inside a house right now, but I'm actually just barely inside the garage with the doors open, so there is lots of air flow, and of course I have my gear on as well, because this is, um, you know, obviously got some chemicals in it and things like that you don't want to be breathing in, and so I'm nice and close, and if I ever feel like there's like too much going on I can just slide the table outside into the driveway and do it that way as well and that's going to be probably even better for you you could get like a plastic drop cloth or tarp set it down in your driveway and then do this process this only took me like an hour which is super fast for this kind of project. But if you do have a little bit more time on your hands and you want to go a little bit more of a safer route, there are several products on the market that are much more green and less toxic and, and even all the way to non-toxic. And one of those is Safest Paint Remover. And I'm just going to put the little picture here so you can see it. It's by 3M. This product sounds really promising. They said you could even wash it down the drain, which I don't know if I would do, but even still, I plan on using it on my next project. But for now, I've got the clean strip and it's really doing the job. You can see there was some paint on here, a big thick piece of paint, and it's just coming right off. All, although this table had a lot of, I will say, damage and dirt and grime and things that needed to be fixed on it or removed, it didn't have a lot of gouges, which was nice because if I had to get into all of those little gouges and stuff and try to sand them smooth, that would have been difficult. I got so excited about refinishing this table and keeping it myself because it didn't have the factory dings that I've seen on so many tabletops. Even Ethan Allen and Pottery Barn, they do this thing where they like in the factory ding the piece all over to give it that rustic vibe and you know rustic stuff is really in even still right now but you know it was like in a while ago too and I see it a lot especially with like darker woods where they just like it looks like they just beat it with rocks and knives and <laughs> all that kind of stuff and then they clear coat it so you have all these little divots and all these 
tiny little grooves that would be difficult to like get in and get the finish out of. So what you see me do with those types of pieces typically on this channel is I do like I'll just paint them as is. I don't fill in all the damage done by the factory and because it's overwhelmingly it's like it would cover the whole piece. Sometimes these like world market pieces will have that too. And I will do just like a paint job on it and so it still looks rustic. You can wax over those and all the wax will go in those nooks and crannies like a brown wax would look nice and give it just a, a rustic vibe but you can still update the piece and give it a different color. And of course you could fill them all in if you have all those. If you want to stain your table you'll need to make sure that it's a type of filler that is stainable. But it will be, if there's a lot of it, it you're definitely going to notice it on a tabletop. So that's something to think about. I also have a Pottery Barn finish that I do that's like a wood looking finish with paint and stain and glaze and all that kind of stuff. I have a bunch of those on my channel and I did a table not too long ago with that finish. So that might be a good option for you if your table has those dings and stuff. Or maybe you want to sell that table and try to find a table like this that is just actually smooth on top something to think about. Okay, so I did not film the disposal of all of this gunk that is coming off and the big pile of like watery gunk that I scraped off. <laughs> and I, for some reason, I don't have any footage of me scraping off all of that stuff. But basically, you want to put it in a container and then you want to add kitty litter or something that will like absorb it, you know, flowers, you know, just probably wouldn't do anything food I food related just in case like uh your you know animals might try to eat or something but uh kitty litter is like my go-to and you can get that at the dollar store for a dollar a bag of kitty litter and you just wait till it hardens and then you can throw it away with your regular trash so that is what you do with these chemical strippers these gooey piles of what looks like uh turkey gravy or something <laughs> So just put it in a bucket or an old fast food container or an old soup bowl or something um, from the Chinese restaurant and add kitty litter, put it in a cool place and wait for it to harden. Not like cool as in a refrigerator, but like cool as in your garage or cool as in a shady area, not um, out in the sun. And then you let that harden up and then throw it away. So here it is, all... <sighs> clean of all that stuff then you have to wait for it to dry and I waited a day of course it was raining and this is not as dry as I wanted it to be for this project but being the hard-headed person that I am <laughs> I, w I proceeded with my mission <laughs> and started sanding I start with 80 then I do 150 and then I do 220 and that is how I got the table smooth. I did hand sand the whole thing. Of course you could, you know, if you have a fancy sander, go for it. And I go and sand with the direction of the wood. So that looks like a lot of back and forth action. And I'm using my little brush. I think a few of these spots were still wet. And so, you know, I probably should have waited another day for it to dry before I started sanding. But here we are because I'm stubborn. And that wire brush really is going to save you in those nooks and crannies. And somebody was asking me about nooks and crannies recently on a piece they were refinishing. Like, how do you sand inside those little nooks and crannies and stuff? And there are little tool sets that you can get on Amazon, little plastic tool sets with the little, you know, sharp little pokers and stuff. Kind of looks like the stuff you would, like, clean tartar off teeth with. Um... And then you can use one of these brushes too and those can get in the little nooks and crannies. So I had a part of this little table that had a ding and I started sanding it and then it got lighter and lighter and lighter because this table is old and the old finish stained the top of the wood. The wood is actually just like a, a really light wood. I think it's maple, pretty sure. And you know, I really like the light wood look, but I liked that old rustic look too. <laughs> but in the end, I really love how the whole thing turned out. So I think I would have loved it rustic as well, but this light wood really was beautiful. And I think it's going to look so modern in my little Eden kitchen. And again, that counter height 
is going to be so nice because everybody wants to come in and chat with you while you're cooking. Everybody wants to sit at the island all the time in houses. And so that counter height, I feel like it's going to be very social and be a good fit for us. Well, I'll, I'll have to keep you guys posted if we really like that. I'm just um, sanding with 220 and using my vacuum at the same time because I don't have a fancy system set up. And then I have a little hack here. If you guys have seen in my videos before, I use these boogie boards all the time, the foam boogie boards that kids use at pools and beaches. And I get them at Goodwill all the time. They're really great for when you're like on your knees working. They're bigger than like the little knee pads. They're great for cleaning <laughs> when you want to clean your floors, all that good stuff. Not that I clean very often, <laughs> but it gets used in the garage a lot more. And then I'm using it here because I've already sanded this table and I don't want it to get like messed up on the edges. And so I, <laughs> I tried. I tried to get it on the boogie board. I don't think I did successfully when I tipped it over, but it's okay. I also am using just like an old blanket on top of the boogie board and I get these old blankets all the time at Goodwill. You can use a moving blanket or whatever. My Goodwill has 99 cent Mondays in Atlanta. So um, that's a pretty cool little thing because you can go in and let's say a blanket has a stain or a rip or something on it. Um, and it's 99 cent Monday, so you can get it for 99 cents and a big blanket like that. I bring it home. I wash it on the sanitized cycle with some Odo ban to remove any odors and disinfect it. I'm not going to sleep with it. <laughs> Although I have no problem sleeping with a blanket from Goodwill as long as it smells good and I can tell it came from a good home, like, and I wash it. I don't care. So here I am. I realized that I need two holes to put this new um, leg on and all four new legs on. And so that's kind of a pain to drill, <laughs> but here we are. I was hoping that it would just pop right in and be two screw system. So maybe for you on your project, it will be that way. But for me, it wasn't. And again, I'm not selling this piece. I don't think, I don't know. I'm not sure if I would feel super comfy altering a table this much and then selling it because who knows? I'm screwing into the structural base of this thing. Who knows if it's going to be sturdy or not? I don't care if my kids, <laughs> if we all fall to the ground one day messing with it, but I would feel bad selling it after um, doing all of this work. Maybe if you were going to do this, you could add some kind of extra support just to feel a little bit better about it. I don't know. It felt pretty sturdy by the end, but I don't know much about what they need in order to be stable for years to come. I'm not going to pretend to be like a building expert at all. You guys know that my favorite thing to do is alter things on this channel. I like to change and modify. I'm a modifier. I'm not a builder. This wood, again, it was like super, super hard. Maple or something, really, really dense wood. And I thought my multi-tool was going to be able to handle it when I went to remove this like boob decor that they put on here. But my multi-tool was not <laughs> up for the job at all. So I, after about like five minutes of really trying to make it work with the multi-tool, because I wanted this video to be very beginner friendly. I was like, okay, I got to get this saw out. <laughs> and it's still beginner friendly, guys, because I clearly am not very good at using this saw. You can tell. I have no idea what I'm doing, really. Um, I am wearing gear. I have goggles on. I have the um, ear protection on. But as far as sawing in a straight line goes, <laughs> I failed the test. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it's my table and my main goal is just to remove those things. And and I figure if I'm going to be experimenting and learning on a new tool, the best thing to do that is on my own projects, the projects that I'm going to keep. And if I see a wonky base on a table or skirt or apron, whatever you call it, on a table that I cut myself... I'm going to still be pretty proud and happy, you know, even if I failed the straight cut test. So here I am drinking some caffeine-free Coke, 
You guys know I have ADD and I have been trying to ease off of the caffeine because even though it makes me feel motivated and feel like I'm productive, ultimately, um, I just, I feel like I'm more disorganized with it, you know? It, like, it gets me to, like, take action, but then ultimately I'm a bit chaotic with it. So, I'm looking for something else, but I don't want to do, like, the prescription meds, like, Adderall made me, ugh, that was terrible. Somebody said to try, like, a over-the-counter asthma medication um, as an alternative. It's, like, a little lighter than, anyway, if you, if you know of some sort of over-the-counter, maybe less intense ADD medication, Drop it below in the comments. You might help me out a lot. Maybe you'll get more videos out of me if I get on the right meds. <laughs> anyway, so finally got that leg on there. Got all the legs on there. You guys see my sparkly New Year's nails? Those are um, actually just like $6 kiss stick-on nails. And they just, if they pop off, who cares? My One of my other friends who refinished his furniture told me about little press on nails and I'm like never going back because they're so fun all right so me and the hubs we flipped the table over (laughs) I knew it was gonna be I knew it was gonna be tall but I did not know it was gonna be so tall I guess it's like a pub height or something it's it's outrageously tall is what it is and you can see I had my chair off to the side and the chair that I want is a counter height stool so I googled it and Google said that 36 and a half inches was the normal height for a counter so that's what I'm going to cut these legs to I also measured the counter in the kitchen uh, right now and it's 36 and a half inches so just gonna mark that on the leg and cut it with the circular saw lucky me I already had the circular saw out and it was ready to go this was probably the fastest part of this whole project was cutting these legs off I'm also gonna save the bottom the little stumpy thing at the bottom and maybe I'll use those on something else Let me know what you guys would use them on. Maybe a riser, maybe a nightstand, who knows. I do use what I chopped off just to double check and make sure it's the same on the other legs too. This is the first time I'd ever cut off table legs like this. So I had no idea what to expect. But it wasn't too complicated. It was pretty easy, pretty straightforward. I know, this is gonna sound crazy, but I'm using a non-toxic clear coat because uh, number one, the lady that owns this company, Earth Safe Finishes, is a really cool lady, and I'm not like sponsored or anything. I just I I did some research trying to find something that was non-toxic a while back because I work with my toddler sometimes, and she loves to paint furniture and I wanted something that was non-toxic and so I found that company reached out to her and got some stuff and um and I've loved it the stuff is really durable it's very easy to use like it's great stuff so you know if you can afford it and want something that's a little bit safer I definitely would recommend our safe finishes the um I figured (laughs) the reason why I wanted to use it especially here is number one, it's water-based and so I know that it won't yellow over time or amber over time for a top coat, which was important to me for this project. And two, I figured since I used that like harsh chemical stripper on the, you know, that was like bad for the planet, I figured I would like make up for it (laughs) by using something really non-toxic. So you know, that's just how I am. I'm just a person of extremes, <laughs> just trying to like do the best I can. Although I told you guys, I, I did some research and I'm going to try to get a more non-toxic chemical stripper um, for my future projects too. Because I don't want to just like 
keep using crazy chemicals all the time. This stuff is, you know, like non-toxic, no VOCs. This clear coat is really, really nice. I just um, apply it with a dollar store car sponge. I find that in the automotive aisle. And I love those, but I want to give a shout out to Sherry Lambeth. She told me that Dollar Tree sells these Scrub Buddy nail guard sponges that she uses for her top coats. And I saw them at my Dollar Tree. I used one. I, I didn't use them in this, this video, but used one and loved it. And they're six for a dollar. So that's pretty good savings. Uh, this stuff just goes on so smooth. It's like butter. You could, of course, use any water-based clear coat of your choice, uh, Verithane, Minwax, you know, the list goes on and on and on, but, uh, you know, you, you want to go with a water-based clear coat or you'll end up with some ambering, yellowing over time, which some people really like that look. I actually do like that look, the ambering look as well. So, but I like so many different furniture looks, it's really hard to make a decision sometimes. But I figured with this being light wood that it would just age well and be very timeless and go with mini decor styles and I love to decorate my table for the holidays and stuff and so with it being such a neutral palette it will be easy to make my decor be the star of the show and this table will just blend in and stuff so the other nice thing about this top coat that I'm using is it's very soft and buttery feeling to the touch I wouldn't say it's as soft as wax, but it has a very nice soft feel to it that I enjoy using. There was another clear coat that I used to use a lot, Rust-Oleum Soft Touch. I don't even know if they sell it anymore, but that one was really buttery soft to the touch as well. I don't know if when you have something like that that's nice and soft, if the durability isn't quite as strong as like an oil based or something. Like I said, I used this stuff with my toddler and we refinished a few different pieces with it. And one of the pieces I, I posted on this channel was a little toy chest for her. And she used the paint from Earth Safe Finishes and the clear coat that I'm using here. And that toy chest, man, she's like throw, you know, you know how kids are and they do all sorts of stuff and she drew on it. I scrubbed that off and it's really held up super well on a piece that was laminate. So, and we didn't prime. I'm super sold. I think that's a really good uh, indication for how well this will hold up on my table getting daily use. And I'm a furniture refinisher. So if it gets some scratches and dings and stuff like that, I'll probably just wax it, honestly. Okay, here's the before, remember, da, 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 da. and here is the after. So much better, so like Scandinavian, rustic, organic, modern vibes, really neutral. It's so pretty. The sheen on that clear coat is the ultra matte sheen. I love that. And I just love it. This project turned out so well. I'm excited to use it in our new place. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.